Welcome to the Upholstery Show, live from Arlington, Massachusetts. We're going to serve you up a beautiful bowl of coconut fiber. Really? <laughs> it never gets old. It's a great introduction done by none other than Patrick, the world famous editor and videographer. <laughs> he happens to be my son, too. <laughs> So hi everybody, we took a week off there, I hope everybody had a, th a good Thanksgiving and um, getting ready for the other holidays coming up. Uh, it was a busy time of year for, um, this year reminded me a little bit about the traditional times we used to get busy in the upholstery world and um, because we're, we're kind of packed here at the shop, so packed that I had to um, you know, cancel one of my, uh, the online class, um, so I just didn't have any room. So that's good news, and I hope that you guys are busy. And I think, from the, judging from how many questions we have, yeah, 20, I think uh, thirty questions. Totally. We have about thirty questions and comments, and I think that that's an indication to me that people are watching the YouTube video, you know, going on the online classes, and and wait till you see. I mean, the proof is in the pudding here, and the photographs that we have to show you, and I, I can't wait to get into this. Uh, but before we get into it, I, Patrick hates me to talk about YouTube, but YouTube, I mean the statistics, the analytics, he wouldn't look up the analytics, he thinks it's bragging up or something, he's probably right. But I just get a kick out of the fact that so many people have viewed us on YouTube and we do, um, how many subscribers, Patrick, do we have? Almost 12,000. Almost 12,000 subscribers, we hit the 10,000 plateau, which is a really big plateau on YouTube, I guess. But I'm really um, honored to be on YouTube and to provide um, this type of help for people. And uh, I think we're reaching people in so many different ways, and I'm happy about that. That's all I'll say. But let's get right to it because we have a lot of business. And as usual, this is a question, a live question and answer. So for all of you who are, are watching the online classes, even if you're watching YouTube classes, you can. this is your time to ask specific questions maybe that I can answer live. So we'll be happy to do that. Um, I did want to get into this chair that's up here. This is a beautiful old English style wing chair that um, if you pan up you can see what distinguishes this from. You can tell old for old wing chairs almost instantly is uh, the size of the wing. The bigger the wing the older the chair pretty much. This and, and the thin thinness of it too up at the top especially the, and the seat cushion uh, that's that's got that's got to be replaced it's got latex in it but this is a very old chair I think this chair is about 160 years old so that that's going to be upholstered this is the old fabric here so I'm really excited um, to get going um, Kathy on Facebook Facebook I'm going to do the Facebook first and then as usual if somebody has a live question that gets precedent over everything that we're doing so the first bless you the first uh, Kathy is um, actually just making some comments here. She says, thanks, uh, Kevin. I couldn't have reupholstered this couch without your informative videos, classes, and or answering my questions. Best teacher I found on YouTube. Thank you, Kathy. The couch turned out beautiful, and I posted to my Facebook. Is that up there now, Patrick? Yeah. Facebook Mid-Century Group. Um, a lot of people were inspired and asked where I learned. I sent them to your YouTube channel. That's the way to go, Kathy. The way to repay me is to do that or to send them to the Broadway upholstery schools even better. And, you know, for all of you guys that have benefited from the YouTube who are upholstering, I would really appreciate it if you used us on um, our website. Um, uh, used us, I mean, to, to buy materials from us. That would be great. And then she goes on, so hopefully you get some more followers. Thank you, Kathy. That's the best compliment. Thanks. Again, I truly appreciate you sharing your craft with the world. And I just want to make a couple of comments. She did a fantastic job. But when you look at this piece, I'm in the Northeast, specifically the Boston area. So the high bar in the Boston area, which isn't me, by the way, as far as pricing goes, and I'm just trying to put in a little bit of a perspective in here about how much Kathy saved by doing this sofa herself. Um, so this, this sofa would have been in the $2,200 to $2,500 range for labor um, in, the, in the Boston area. Now, as you go out west, I'm sure um, other parts of the country are not as, we're in a major metropolitan area, and we're in a major metropolitan area that happens to like mid-century furniture that will command those prices. 
So if you average it out, Kathy, I'm not sure where Kathy is, but I would say on average, this is a 1500 across the country, a $1,500 labor job that she did. And she did a really good job. She's got, she's not shy about showing different angles on this. And she didn't stage this, I don't think. This is the, this is the good job that she did, Kathy. Good job. And if you're watching, I, you know, pers you know, it's just fantastic. Thank you for, for sharing this with us. So let's just go to the next one. Another uh, mid-century. Oh, this was a good one. Okay. Lucas uh, says on Facebook. By the way, if you haven't joined Facebook, um, Patrick, are we keeping up with all the people that join Facebook? Yeah, uh, thanks to Jimmy. He's been keeping up with Yeah, really and if Jimmy's watching, I want to thank Jimmy for being uh, one of the administrators on that. Sometimes I don't even have a chance to do it myself. He does it, he's, he's so quick, but I, I'm glad he does it. Yeah. Uh, but how many people would you say we have on Facebook? Over a hundred. That's pretty good, isn't it, for Facebook? Mm -hmm. So thank you, you guys. Um, I think you would really enjoy that if you guys are just starting out, even if you have your own shop or you're more advanced. I like going through the, the pictures that, and comments that people post. And a lot of times, it's funny, before I can even comment, one of my other students has already commented, which I think is great. It saves me a little time. And usually the people are answering the correct ways. And it's, it's nice how people are helping one another. And Facebook, this is one of the better things that Facebook does, I think, Patrick. I really do. I really like this aspect of Facebook a lot. Yeah. More personable. Yeah. So Lucas, he says, hi, everyone. I wanted to ask advice on here. I'm busy restoring a set of four uh, Christensen chairs, and they have an extremely curved back that I'm having. By the way, congratulations on having these chairs. They're not... They're not cheap. They're expensive around here. They, they go for some good money. Um, they have an extremely curved backrest that I'm having trouble with. I'm, I'm having difficulties getting the creases completely out of the fabric when working on the inside back. I've done my stapling by starting from the middle, bottom, and stretching the fabric upwards and around the sides. Is there something I'm not doing right? Is it the materials I have been using? or I'll, I can finish that off if you want me to. Yeah. Or, or the I use one centimeter sorry I'm from Europe foam and a or, yeah one centimeter foam and a thin batting for the backrest. The fabric I'm using doesn't have much stress to it and I think that could be part of the problem. I've redone them twice already and I'm getting to my wits end. I think <laughs> I actually would be appreciated. I think I did actually answer Lucas. You did, I just wanted to maybe you could But I'll answer it live for yeah, anybody yeah. that hasn't seen the question. So I thought that the padding material other than the fabric that he was using was appropriate. I think what happened with this is the fabric doesn't stretch as well. Just to give you an idea, Knoll, which is a, you know, they make mid-century furniture, this is funny, modern mid-century furniture, or new mid-century furniture today. I don't know how you sort that out, but anyhow. Um, they, um, on specific furniture that they have, mid-century, like the womb chair, for instance, very good example, W-O-M-B, womb chair. On that, they spec out a, a wool, a, a specific wool for that chair. Nothing else will work on that chair. Customers try to give me stripe, they try to give me tapestries, whatever. Nothing works better on these curves, especially the extreme curves, than wool does. So that would probably be the only thing that I would say. Other than that, now, he's, Lucas is being really hot on himself, too, because I look at these, I do see the pucker a little bit, but, but I think that he's about 90% there. So this is where, I have to bring this up, and I know it sounds like I'm pushing with these online classes, I, but I, I don't mean to do this. But on the online classes, we overcome, we present problems like this and give... There's a lot of tips that go along with getting the, the rest of the 10% of these wrinkles out. And I, I don't even know, I guess, you know, there's pin tacking, which is you're not stapling all the way. There's an approach to that. There's cutting the fabric up to the staple. That kind of relieves the insides. Things like that. That we have the online classes go into in-depth that the YouTube videos do not do. And I'm always impressed. I'm going to go back to Kathy's. And she says she's just been watching... YouTube, I think. I, I don't think she's... Is she a member of the online classes, pa Patrick? Yeah, I don't think so. Kathy, I have to say congratulations on, on being able to 
but what you must be good at is collecting the videos and getting the best of the videos and then coming up with a beautiful job that you did. I think that the YouTube videos are great, but I, I just, you know, I just don't give out the information and I don't do it on purpose. I, I, I just don't, when there's nobody there asking the questions, you just tend to, you know, go a little too fast in the videos. And I think this is true in almost every YouTube video that I've seen that's being presented by somebody that's a craftsman or master craftsman or uh, even, you know, somebody with degrees, whatever. I think that you you know it, but you're assuming that everybody else does, and they don't. So the online classes, they do, right, Patrick? And along those same lines, we just got a, a live comment here from Belinda. She says, "Your skill and lessons have helped me renovate a upholster, a family chaise. Thank you for sharing." Belinda, are you just looking at the YouTube videos, or are you an online class? Well, I think she's. I don't recognize her name. Another sure. YouTube video yeah. we watcher. We love that. It's awesome. I, I love it too, but I always like to tell the thing about that, the, about the washing machine, I mean the, the, the dishwasher, Patrick. What? <laughs> I, I, I went on YouTube to fix a dishwasher that I had, oh, right. and there's this guy telling you how to do it, and, and he got all technical and everything else about water being left on the bottom, and I went through all of, twice I did it, twice, taking the thing apart, putting it back together, and the thing is, it was... And this is no, uh, I'm not pointing fingers at this guy because this is typical. There was something very easy in the beginning. It had to do with the lay, it had to do with the, the, the fact that dishwasher wasn't level, right? It, it, it was missing a tile in the back. You know, if he had just said, he's like, I'm going to start this video by saying, check all your legs to make sure they're balanced. That would have saved me about 10 hours and a lot of aggravation. So this is what... Keeping it simple. Keeping it simple, exactly. Exactly. So thank you, Lucas, for that, um, and I, I hope that Lucas should get back to us to see if the tip that I did give him um, helped. So the next one, and thank you, Belinda, for being a, a fan, and we like our fans. Brandy, she, uh, this is a good one, too. She's got a lot of good pictures here, doesn't she, Patrick? Do yeah, you have there's another one that isn't included in on your uh, paper there, of a, a cat sitting on it. I'll put that up for everyone. Oh, pollsters love cats. Yeah, she mentions that in there. Go ahead and read okay. it. <laughs> I, I can't get through this without laughing because uh, at one point this upholsterer that I worked for, he wanted to give a kitten away for every every uh, sofa that he upholstered. Right, Patrick? <laughs> <laughs> it would be like him and the client. Of, yeah, I, here's what it would be like, you guys. It's a box of razor blades. <laughs> it would be like you the customer a box of razor blades and say, "Hey, have fun with these. Cat's claws are ah, sharp, I think. Almost as razor blades. Is that right, you guys? They're sharp. And they do a number on upholstery, really. And we have some cat tips on the YouTube, right, Patrick? Yeah, there's a few that you did just about that. And I, one of the funny things about these videos we did, they're kind of spoof. Video. They had they had information in there, right, Patrick? Yeah, but they're the most popular ones. People love them. Yeah, but you had a picture of a kitty cat coming out of the sofa or something. <laughs> like you, I, you, I think they did, yeah. <laughs> but somebody said there was a debate on the comments. They were debating. One guy said, this guy doesn't know anything about cats. <laughs> and then somebody else said, he's an upholsterer. What would he know about cats? All you need to know is how to fix the damage. Like I, just, I was just presenting cat damage. I wasn't... <laughs> I wasn't trying to get in the mind of a cat that does this. <laughs> Listen to that. That's another sound that an upholsterer loves that sound. <laughs> right, Patrick? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that means there's going to be a call <laughs> saying, hey, the cat destroyed my wing chair. I need a new one. Right? I'm kind of kidding. I don't think that's... I think we love our pets. Right? Brandy says, hi, everyone. Figured you could use a good laugh. <laughs> Speaking of laughs, right, Patrick? Yeah. That was a good segue, wasn't it? At this novice's first attempt at reupholstering. Clearly, that cat and our son were the biggest help. <laughs> so I think it goes in the order. Here's the order. Cats, dogs, husbands, children. Right? That, as far as damage goes, the, the, the damage caused by those four, right? Well, weather, I don't know. <laughs> no, no. The lightning strikes, the tornado. No. Well, one time I posted a sofa that went out to the ocean. Uh, Remember that, Patrick? Yeah, I, I had a blog post about that. Yeah, just worth mentioning quickly, a, a sofa that I, I was called in on a sofa the second time out, I think. And the story was that this, this was along a, 
a very uh, posh town in Cape Cod when this huge storm came in and it was along the ocean. The, the ocean came in right through the, the living room and took all the contents of the living room out to the ocean, including this sofa. And the couple, who weren't there thankfully, uh, were in their other home. They came down three days later to look at the damage and it was terrible. It was a total loss. There was nothing left. None of the contents of the house, right? So they were an older couple. They were just happy that nobody was hurt really in this storm. But anyhow, check that out on the blog. It's called the Salty Love Seat. The Salty Love Seat on the blog. And as they were walking down the beach hand in hand, probably, I think they were like in their 50 years of marriage, they were walking down and they see this object half in the sand. And as they get closer, she recognized it as the love seat. The salty. love seat that had, what? The salty love seat. The salty seat. love seat that had gone out to sea and then come back. And then they recovered it, and then I came in and recovered the second time out. But but it's a, a really romantic story for the ages, you guys. Right, right, Patrick? He's in the back. Yes, right. so, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so clearly that's, that cat and our son were the biggest help. Thank you for all the inspiration tutorials on YouTube and Facebook. Being a stay-at-home mom during COVID, it's been awesome to watch all of your skill and amazing projects. That's a great compliment, isn't it, Patrick? And there's a picture of the cat I got up there now. Yeah, is it? What type of cat is it? it it's a. It's black and it has like orange spots. Oh, really? It's like we know somebody who has a cat that looks just like this cat. There's so many cat. If you have a cat story related to furniture, we'd like to hear it, wouldn't we, Patrick? Okay, and send us pictures if you have. Cat? Of yeah, we'd like to. We. Hey, you know what, Patrick? I think this would make a great. Uh, YouTube video. You know, in the future, we should have a segment on these Q and A's. One I, segment for you. Send us your damaged furniture from your cats or pets. Yeah. And we'll tell you how to fix it. <laughs> hey, that would be good. I think that would it's be good. The pet damage section. But you know, I hear the most popular YouTube videos are the ones with puppies and kitty cats and things like that, right? Well, yeah, I don't know if shredding is, a piece of furniture. Well, is there any way cute. we can incorporate our pets in, in a in a cute way into into the? Maybe we can pose them on our our furniture. Uh. Not all cats, you know, and dogs damage furniture, right? A lot of them like it. So why don't we have people send us their, their, their animals on their favorite piece of furniture or piece of furniture that they had upholstered maybe, like Brandy. Um, but Brandy, I think you're doing a terrific job here. I see that she's doing this. She's up to the burlap here. That's all I see, Patrick. Did she actually finish this chair? Uh, it might have been, it's, there's two more pictures I couldn't fit on. Okay, so we don't have those. Sorry, guys. Uh, and then next, any live questions? Uh, no uh, live nothing questions. Nothing now, just um, Belinda followed up by that. She's going to check out the website, so thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And um, she's going to share the picture of her chase. So once you know, she sends that, I will. Thank you, Patrick. We find that, you know, we have a few people that are watching this every time. There's like 20 to 30 or whatever it is. Or more. And she just sent me that. Wow, it looks like the one you just had in here, Deb. Which one? She sent uh, Belinda a picture of her chaise. Oh, did you get a picture of that chaise, Patrick? I'll print it out. You can go on to the next question. I'll yeah, let's it. let's show it. And that interesting thing about the chaise that I did was done in a cruel work. A cruel work, you guys. A handmade fabric. I think I might have a little piece to show you. Yeah, it's handmade. And Michaela wants to send me those pictures along. I don't think guys. This is cruel work. This is a handmade piece of fabric. Let me tell you, this is expensive. And Patrick's going to print out the chaise that I just did. Okay, Let's just that picture. keep that right there. We had fun doing this. This this is a beautiful fabric. What are you talking about? I might as well show you his. She just sent that. Oh, this is this is beautiful. It's, well, should I, I hold it up like this? Sure, I can put it up too. You can put it up. Yeah. That's very similar, Patrick. I know. <laughs> This, now you know what this is, don't you? I'm not Perfect. sure. Belinda, is this Belinda? Yeah. Belinda, this is an East Lake. That's an East Lake, Patrick. Oh wow. Yeah. So that should be the sequel to the class. The one I did was a Victorian. So you guys will see the major difference is the is the Victorian has softer lines. The East Lake, what distinguishes the East Lake are those straight up uh, straighter lines, especially. Uh, if you have it up there, Patrick, it's the arm and the back. Up there now, the fur one. We'll just give people a chance to absorb. We're giving them a lot of information. We don't want overload, upholstery overload, you know. But never forget, upholsters never die. They always recover. Please. <laughs> <laughs>
they used there used to be a fabric company years ago that used to have bumper stickers that they gave out that said that. I guess it is a bumper sticker, you know. So Gabriel McFar, I won't say her last name. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Thanks a lot. I went through all that trouble trying to hide the last name. I, I didn't get it out. I didn't get it out. I didn't get it out. Uh, too late for that. We're live. Gabriel, I didn't get. I didn't say the whole name. Last name. <laughs> Gabriel says now she's a new member too. Uh, very new. November twentieth. She says and she's got. Do you have those pictures up there, Patrick? Yep. Wow, that looks like Jimmy's. She, right. she says, thank you. The YouTube videos alone have provided improvement. I have just recently watched all of them. Wow. Gabriel, if you're watching, really? You watched all of them? I mean, how many do we have, Patrick? Almost, uh, has to be over 200 right now. So if we have 200 videos that even are a half hour long each, <laughs> you're talking 100 hours. Is that right? They're that popular. You're talking to between 100 and 120 hours of videos. Gabriel's watched them all. You must be sick of me. <laughs> Seriously. But I, I'm impressed. I really am. That, think about sitting in front of your computer pattern for 100 hours. Oh. Watching me. That's, a, that's, a, that's the biggest compliment you can get. You know what? It will. This is the third comment we've got about people who just watched the YouTube videos and retained enough information. That's awesome. Uh, you know, the disadvantage I had was, you know, the guy shows you once and he expects you to learn. If you ask him again, they get mad at you. With, with you guys have the advantage of playing the YouTube over again. You wouldn't believe the apprenticeship difficulties that were associated with this trade 40 years ago. Some of the mean things that pe people used to do. Now I look back on it and I, I think maybe they just, maybe it was out of love. Yeah, right. I watched, uh, speaking of you, Patrick, you're going to like this one. Speaking of uh, apprenticeship, um, apprentice, apprentices usually, a, a, they goof on them a lot, especially in the construction trades, Patrick. You wouldn't believe no. what they do to the newbies. They do in the fire department, too, and the police. They all do it. You know, it's, I guess it's a form of bullying, so maybe, maybe they shouldn't do it, right, Patrick? I don't know. I, I mean, I've worked in programs with, uh, in, I've done upholstery for therapeutic reasons for people. And um, I could tell you that I would never do that to anybody. I would never. I tried not to, you know. There's your chaise up there now. This is a little dysfunctional, isn't it, you guys? So with that chaise that you're looking at now is very close to, to uh, the one that um, we just showed. Um, it's, it, it's just the same amount of upholstery, I guess. So what was I talking about, Patrick? What was I talking about? I think you're on to the... Uh, you, you've, you did Gabriel's. So no, you're, you're just sick of listening to me. I had a point to make and I got distracted. I think you're out of the YouTube question. I... <laughs> no, you're not. I don't know. You forget what I was saying. I was about to make a point that was I thought... Was, oh, so I saw this video on... Um, they had a guy doing well... Uh, he was welding something or something with the grinding wheel and there was sparks coming out behind him and he he was having the apprentice was behind him with the bucket and he was told to catch the sparks catch the sparks in the bucket and put them in the in the trash can and and the guy was dutifully he was behind him with the with this big bucket collecting these <laughs> collecting these sparks and and going over to the trash can there was nothing in the bucket but it was funny just i guess in a weird way it was funny but anyhow that's what apprentice so most apprentices have to go so if you're getting the videos and not and you're not getting picked on while you're watching them I guess that's it that's only a benefit right guys so um, off to the next one does that make any sense Patrick yeah, what I'm saying because yeah. I've told the chick I told hey, the people people are spoiled nowadays with YouTube it's so easy just to to get whatever you want, you know. I think but it's, it's a, good. It's good. Though. I think it's a very functional way. I do that with 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 stuff too. Now, what if you were to? What if somebody was trying to? You were trying to learn something, and on top of the learning, there was all this goofing going on and, and making fun of you and all that. <laughs> How did you feel about that, Patrick? You I were, probably would have flipped out. And <laughs> <laughs> you had I think to it take. I was very good at what I was trying to learn. That's because sure. every one of these guys that I learned was. A YouTube channel pretty much they had all that information in them and it, you, it was up to you to draw it out and it wasn't easy you had to be very tactful and there were some guys who wouldn't share anything so those are the guys you know I'll show you I'll give you a little demonstration 
So, you know, my job was to sweep the floor. You, you do that in the, in the beginning of an apprenticeship program in the old days, right? So you're sweeping the floor. He's, he's right here working, and you're going like this, and you're going by. And he'll quickly look around, and you go. <laughs> so you'd be surprised. Most of them were like that. So, really, it was tough. It was a tough way to learn, but I, looking back on it, you know, the knowledge. I was around all these, oct uh, you know, 80-year-old men. And you know about four or five of them, eighty times five. That's about you know, four, four hundred years of whatever of knowledge. So. Um, and then now we got all the younger people who are opening up their own shops because of because of you. We have people. You know my favorite stories, you guys, are single mothers who are, who are, who have picked this up and and um, have earned a little supplemental income and things like that. We hear from those people. We'd love to hear these stories, by the way, if you have any out there. Um, you know, I like watching these YouTube tear jerkers. Some once in a while, I'll put it on. Patrick doesn't know this about me, <laughs> but you know, there's all that all that uh, stuff down there about good deeds and all that, and you, right. you watch them. I'm a sucker for those videos, so I'd like to hear from you if if you've got stories of you know where this upholstery has an especially our channel, but it could be any channel. Well, that would have been cool. Maybe we can arrange an interview with some of these people. Yeah, if you guys are willing to share your story. A lot of people don't share their stories, but if, if you could share your story, if we've, if we've influenced you in that type of a way. I, I like the story about the English uh, company, Patrick, that I t I've talked about. Yeah. And there's another woman in the Midwest who, you know, and, and other, other stories that we've heard from, but like to hear more of them. So let's get to the YouTube. Speaking of YouTube, right Pat? Yep. The first one is, this has been a very popular one, fixing a pop button, right? Yeah, you see that word free there, that's what catches the eye. You know, I, I, I <laughs> but also, <laughs> we'd have to take a survey. I, I, I never knew there were so many Audis out there. You know what an Audi is, Patrick? The heck? <laughs> an Audi is a pop button. You know, you have innies and Audis. The innies are the buttons that stay in, and the outies are the ones that are popping out, right? I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's losing uh, it. No, it's funny. I think people will appreciate that. I know, I'm just kidding. Like, this is great. i got to take Jimmy's role today, you know, the wise crowd. I know. I miss the guy. Where is he? Where I is know. He I just couldn't. I, I didn't have, literally didn't have any room in this shop today. Okay, so this is the pop button, the video. Uh, this is a comment. This is great. Thank you so much. I bought a couch used, and I thought I got a great deal. When I got home, it wasn't long until I realized a button had popped. The worst nightmare. Now, now, if she didn't have that video, that would have been a two to three hundred dollar repair by some upholsterer who wanted to come out and fix it, or if she hired an upholsterer, it maybe even more, if he didn't have a German needle. And was that one there, Patrick, with the German needle or without yeah, the I think it was. I remember using it. Has anybody... We have that kit on the Broadway Upholstery. Yeah, we have the button supply. making kit. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, but people haven't purchased that. I think they're using the other video. Mm -hmm. It might not be something that people want to... Some of these things, you know, they use it once and it might not be worth the investment. You know, yeah, and I show... Is. The other video, I show how to do it using home tools, yeah. which is kind of cool. Um, <clears throat> this has been a popular video, how to oppose the 1860 antique chair restoration, spring, this is part three, springtime. And so, um, this is from Ma, she says, wanted to do a try on a finished project Victorian sofa, but afraid I don't digest much a lesson for springtime. You know, I'm going to reassure her, Ma. I have a comment too in the same video, I want to just get them both in one. So, okay, I'll get to that. Well, why don't I just read that one, too? Yeah. She says, thanks a lot, so interesting. Hope to learn more as I keep following up on your videos. I wanted to make a comment about Tyne Springs. So, <clears throat> in the shop that I was, it was it was the upholsters away or the highway. You know, you had to put every knot the way he did it. Even if he was left-handed and he was, t and I'm right-handed, and he was tying left-handed knots, you have to do it my way or the highway. Really? <clears throat> Don't think that the way even I show you is the way that you have to do it. Remember, with springs, it's simple. They have to be standing straight up, tight. The twines have to be tight, and you have to have eight ties on them. If you have a 
single knot, a double knot, or a crossover, or anything else, as long as you have that principle down, you've done it your way. Like Frank Sinatra's song, your way, right? Well, my way. It's your way. Seriously, I, we have a great little trade here, which is, it does reflect as you go along, your personality is reflected in the work that you do. And I know what I'm talking about. I, this, this has happened to me. I've gone into houses and I've looked at a piece of furniture and I said, Monty did that. Monty was a, my, one of my uh, met, uh, uh, mentors. He did that. How do you know he did that? I could tell his style of upholstery. I could tell how that's been done. And, and sure enough, I took it apart and his, his sign name is in the back. I knew I didn't have to take it apart to know that. But it was cool that I upholstered that after so many years. And it, it could have been in the shop when I was there in the late 70s. But I think it's great. I think we got a great trade. I think that you guys put your, put your personalities to each piece that you do. And that's great. So the next one is from Dudong, Patrick. Mm -hmm. Dudong? I think so. How's a long username. How <laughs> to upholster outside back with dining room chair. Part two. Nice work master. Oh, wow. Maybe well, that that's, master title now. That's a good, <laughs> that's a good, maybe that's dojo. Dojo. Maybe. Do you know what a dojo is, Patrick? Yeah, the karate studio. The karate right? studio, yeah. right. Maybe we should open a... Once this whole crazy thing goes away, right? Maybe we should open an upholstery karate studio. Sounds dangerous. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Our first lesson will be how to spit tax. <laughs> <laughs> the lawsuit waiting to happen. I know. Can you imagine the insurance on something like that? You go to your insurance company and you say, yeah. I want to I wanna have a shop where people are going to be putting these big tacks in their mouth and I'm teaching them how to spit while they're learning karate. <laughs> How much do you think that will cost an insurance? They're not holding the regular classes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> if I someone know. got hurt in our, in our uh, before the pandemic, we had the class, I remember that guy got hurt. Yeah. And, and over there at the studio. Yeah, but you know, it, it is, uh, it's a, as far as trades go, you know, if you're an iron worker, you have a lot of chance of getting hurt in that trade, Patrick. Right. By the way, I wouldn't mind doing that. I, did I ever tell you that, that? That I'm very good. Uh, I can be at heights, no problem at all. Um, we're getting some messages. Is this? Are these live messages coming in that I hear? Let me just check the out. I think this might be something. Uh, never mind. Um, so let's get, back, let's get back to this. Um, this is from Stuffing a Cushion Cheaply and Effectively. So we love these informative, little informative videos that we do. Because it dawns on me, Patrick, that people are getting used furniture all the time, like that last comment, right? Yep. So it's all about extending the life of a piece of furniture, right? Um, instead of it going into the, the landfill. So the last one was an example of a, you know, they might have just thrown that sofa away if they didn't like a pop button. A lot of people that bother us, I don't blame them. So they fixed the button and the sofa's in her apartment maybe for another five to ten years. So that means it doesn't go into the landfill and she doesn't go out and buy or replace it with more used furniture and that person goes out and buys, you know what I'm saying. This one's a good example too. Um, never gave the landfill a thought in regards to, I didn't know that that was going to say that. <laughs> This is a great segue. Never, never gave the landfill a thought in regards to furniture. Thank you for saving space. You know, I once did it. I studied this a little bit. And I once did, you know those little green buckets that, that a lot of places have? Now they've gone to the big ones because more people are recycling. I noticed that, Patrick. Mm -hmm. Remember, we used to have the small buckets. Where, where only specific materials could be recycled. And now it's the same size as the trash can. Now the, the, it's the same size as the trash can. I think this is good news, you guys. But nobody ever thought of, of replacement furniture and, and how much landfill that would take out. I figured it out once. It was like oh, six months of that little box um, throwing a sofa into the landfill. That's how much space was taken up. Wow. And I, I did a really, I was really interested at one point because I thought it was a great way to advertise. Um, people don't think of furniture when they throw it away. And well, how much we just donated 
So that's one thing. A bunch of our scrap fabric. Oh, who is and that? They're going to use that to sure they'll donate. They'll do something. Oh, for tell it. us a little bit about that. What's that going to be used for? Uh, we don't know. Well, they send it to a place, right, Michaela? Yeah. And I know they're going to reuse it. So a bunch of we have tons of scraps in the basement here. We just donated that. So we so donated hopefully, it. Hopefully, uh, someone finds a good use for it. And this is a nonprofit that takes care of horses. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, you're not going to use it personally. They're going to send it off, but so there's sure someone will get a good use out of it. I love that. I, I love that that recycling um, and see another nonprofit's uh, gain from what we do. It reminds me of that video that we did, Patrick. What was that? The uh, the video about the ottoman. Uh, oh, the Molly and Mudcloth. Molly and Mudcloth. What a story that was. Yeah, that was very cool. A local person who had her own nonprofit trying to help these poor women uh, support their families in, uh, I think it was uh, Northern Africa, Patrick. Yeah. Where, she actually um, went over there. Very cool. She went over there but hasn't been able to go over recently because of all of the terrorism that's going on, unfortunately. God bless us. And the pandemic, too. Now. And the pandemic. <laughs> and these poor people were poor enough as it was. Without this help, I can imagine. I can't even imagine. But we did this video for her. We showed how to do this, how to make... They have this fabric they wanted more uses for to try to help these people a little bit more. So check it out, you guys, that YouTube video. Molly and Mudcloth Ottoman. Yeah, I don't think, you know, surprisingly, Patrick, that's not as popular as many of the other ones. Because you weren't in it. What do you mean? <laughs> I'm just kidding. You were in the beginning of it. Though. Yeah. Uh, but uh, there's a live question here. Okay, live question. Uh, from Siri. I have a Danish MCM sofa with a perfect orange striped fabric. Nice. The fabric is still in really good shape, no wear, just dusty. Stuffing is worn down to dust. Yeah. Can I redo the day bed using the same fabric? Of course. You need to take care of those cushions. So right now, latex. They used to use latex. Anytime you see dust associated with the cushion, you had latex that's pulverized. First it gets hard, like this one, and then it pulverizes. As a matter of fact, just so happens, let me just take a look at this to see if this has a zipper. No, but you know something? I'm going to cut this cushion. Now we're going to have some live action, you guys. Now, I'm going to show. What's her name? Siri. S-I-R-R-Y. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm going to show you what you have inside your cushions and get ready for some drama. Look at this. You've got to be kidding. This is so bad. This is latex. You know, latex was used a lot by architecture firms and furniture stores in that time frame. And this is all, this is all crusted, you guys. And here's the powder. This one is all not as bad as the one she probably has, but you can start seeing it starts to powder. And so they used to use, this was an unbelievable material when it first came out. It, it's a pr pretty much a rubber, right? And the only problem with it is that it does this after not too long. Depending on the weather too, it'll it'll be faster than this happens to. Whereas polyurethane, now, I guess the positive thing about this cushion is that it will be biodegradable pretty much. Polyurethane, I can't say that it will, but a good polyurethane cushion doesn't have to be replaced. So that's a good thing about that. But I'm glad I had that up there as a as an example. She just followed up saying, maybe she, I think she might be local, because she said, when will you open up again? I want to take a class with you. Oh, I know. Listen. I, if we do do it, um, it, it would probably be here, and right there, in the future. Uh, I don't know, Patrick. But it's such a small space, and, you know, we miss our, our inline class. I used to love te I te I love teaching. I love teaching multiple. We, one time, uh, when I was a little younger, I used to teach 12 people at a time. Can you believe that? 12 at a time at this type of business. Well, I don't doubt it's not going to happen. I think it's going to happen again. We just have to wait and see, you know, uh, Patrick, where I, it'll be and what the circumstances are. Patrick, like. I just realized this was a repair job, and I just cut this cushion. I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. <laughs> I believed you. <laughs> I don't think you'd admit that on live YouTube. Hi, Mrs. Jones. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, now you have a window. Yeah, this is... <laughs> No, I don't think that would work. Anyhow, who needs Jimmy? Who needs Jimmy, right, Patrick? Oh, we need him. I miss the guy. I know. He's probably still recovering from Thanksgiving. I know. I know. 
Jimmy, are you? Is he watching? He's probably. I think he's mad at you for canceling today. I know. You know what? The funny thing is, I I I texted. I don't blame him. I don't blame the guy. I know. I texted him. I texted Jimmy. Uh, I'm too. You can't come in because there's too much stuff. Blah blah blah. And I realized it was the wrong Jimmy. It was my Jimmy over in Ireland. <laughs> And he didn't get the message, and he came, and I had to tell him. I said, "Jimmy, I have no place to do this today. It's crazy." Well, that week, that that, that holiday, we took off. Mm. Things accumulated. Yeah, that's pretty much why. One of the reasons why. Yeah. So, Siri says she's, she is local, but she's in Iceland, right? Wow, Iceland. Wow. She's in Iceland. Yeah, her Iceland's very nice. Wow. But no, uh, we hope to get at some point that I'm sure I can't rule it out completely. I'm sure you'll get back to it some. Point. Is it Iceland or Greenland that has all the volcanoes, Patrick? Volcanoes. Yeah. All I know, is Iceland has waterfalls. It's all. <laughs> oh, and I love waterfalls. But uh, right, I think you'll do them again. We still don't know when. I think so. Yeah. But you'll know if we do them. You will know. Yeah, we tried the. Uh, I, I want to bring it up, Patrick. Uh, some things don't don't work on Zoom and I think we've realized unless it's for somebody that's a little bit more advanced like like Janine or Erica or Erica um, and one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom it, which that worked out really good with Erica uh, we just don't have a, a way of teaching more than one person a split screens would not work I, I'm convinced of that Patrick I think it would just be too confusing and this this more descriptive stuff that I have to do with the Zoom class. I don't know. I can't explain it, but it, it, it's not going to work. Well, that's fine. I think we, what we have at classes that are already up there are, are, are perfect for well, that's people why. to understand. That, you know, well, the, main, the main thing we say is you don't have to have that specific piece that's featured in that class to learn something. That's a good point, Patrick. Yeah. Those online classes, you don't need. You know, we have East Lake Furniture. We have the Arts and Crafts Chair. We have the the channel back, I mean not channel back, the um, curved back chair that that Michelle did, that's a very popular class because it's a fully upholstered chair. Right, the tub chair is the, the most tub popular chair one. The tub chair is what I'm talking yeah. about. So each one of those segments has all these good little tips for you guys that you probably wouldn't get on YouTube. You can apply that to almost anything. That you can right? apply it, right, right. So the next one is from Elaine. Um, that's funny. It reminds me of Seinfeld, Patrick. <laughs> Elaine, remember the the Reader's Digest? Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's not my boyfriend. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I'm a little giddy today. Because well, uh, good thing Jimmy is in here. It has been too. I know. I haven't taken my nap, you guys, <laughs> and the coffee isn't helping at all. <laughs> and believe it or not, I don't drink. Can you believe this? <laughs> Right, Pat? You have my simultane. Thank God for that. If you did, you'd be... I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't drink. I don't smoke. You know? Definitely don't smoke. Oh. Around the furnace. Let me tell you, smoking <laughs> and upholstery. If, you, if there's a smoking upholster out there, change your job right now. <laughs> <laughs> don't even watch the videos. <laughs> we should put up a disclaimer or an extra to the videos, if, if you, you, a warning. The Surgeon General has determined that cigarette smoke is dangerous for your upholstery. Right, Patrick? Uh, I have a question for you. What? Live. What? If you, someone came to you, a customer with the, with the furniture that was smelling of smoke and wanted you to repair it, would you bring it in and do it, or would you reward the smell would? No, I, I have done it, and you have to go down. You go layer for layer and do the sniff test. And at some point, Sometimes you have to go right down to the frame. It's you not worried about the smell jumping to the other piece of furniture. No, no, not in that way. That's funny you should mention that. No, the only the only thing that would damage is direct smoke. You know, but it's so bad that we we have a shop here and one, two, three doors down there's a variety store where the guys and the girls <laughs> go out there and smoke, and the the smoke wafers down. I can't have my door open because if it's open and smoke gets in, people have a Upholstery is like a sponge for, for cigarette smoke, and people have such a nose for smoke, and they can smell it. So it's, it would be a nightmare, an absolute nightmare, if you were smoking upholsterer. Not good. Yeah, it's like uh, jumbo shrimp. I guess it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, make sure you read Elaine's comment. So Elaine, Elaine. <laughs> 
She says, uh, thank you for your videos. They are so helpful and, and informative. They have given me confidence to t try several new projects here in England. Oh, we have a lot of uh, viewers in England, Patrick. England, Ireland. Yeah. Oh. And this was a, one that I did on how to cut fabric around posts. And I have a way of teaching. Um, I've developed a teaching technique that's not a cookie cutter teaching technique. Um, so when I have 12 people in a class, and I think any good teacher is going to be able to determine how to teach a stu particular student. We're all different learners. I don't care who you are. And some people have a harder time than others. And I, I had a knack for being able to teach each person to their abilities or to their learning. I don't want to call it a disability. Learning um, approach, I guess, would be the right thing. Or learning, you know what I'm saying. Um, I'll give you a for instance. Um, and, and then as a teacher, being able to kind of let go and sometimes letting your students teach you. I have a perfect example of this. I had a student years ago who was born with all of their organs on the opposite side. So, you know, my heart's here, his heart was here, and so on. And he s used to see things not like we saw things. He, he, he processed the opposite. Does that make sense? Or he, as if he was looking in a mirror and seeing the, the correct image of himself. It's, it's really strange. Uh, I had never heard of that. And I actually had to adjust my teaching for him and then give up. You know, I, I, I made sure I wasn't critical of anything he did because I understood what his problems were. So, so to let you know, what on the bottom of the chair, I'll never forget this, I came over and the, the cambric, instead of being turned under, was turned up, the cambric. Usually we, we turn it under. I was just about to say, you know, you have that on backwards or wrong, and I caught myself. And it was, it was a, a, a great moment I had of um, a teaching, one of those teaching moments that, that I, where I learned. So what I try to do, though, when I'm presenting um, the YouTube or the online classes, I think you'll see this more in the YouTube classes, Patrick, where I change teaching, teaching methods maybe, mm -hmm. because I think this was one of them, where I tried to go into a little bit more detail about how, because cutting around posts is the hardest thing because you're working backwards. So this guy actually had an easy time, work, the, the, the student that I was talking about had an easy time visualizing that the first time. And, to, and I'll tell you what he used to do for, for work, he was a radiologist, Patrick, wow. somebody that he read x-rays as they were, do you know what I'm saying? Because of, because of the, he was, he was, his brain processing was different. Does that make any sense at all? Well, I don't know. That be a tough, <laughs> tough <laughs> job, that's all I know. So I have, I have great respect for teachers, especially special ed teachers, because they really have to be uh, on the ball here with, with different learning styles, right? Learning styles, that's what it is. So let's go to the next one. If you guys haven't, you, you guys don't know that I did teach for four years in a therapeutic program for people with different, with, with uh, varying degrees of um, mental illness and head injury. So that's where I, I became a better teacher for sure doing that. I, I love doing that too. Um, at a time, well that's another story, but that, it was a good time and I'm glad I did it because it makes me a better teacher. So if you're ever wondering how did I how did I learn all this, I think I learned it there, you know, really teaching those 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 poor folks how to, you know, how to work. Susie, stuffing a cushion cheaply, another one, right? Another comment on that. She says, You you are a genius. <laughs> Patrick. There you go. Are yeah. you how's your stomach? Is it turning over yet? <laughs> I'm <laughs> jealous. I don't, I don't take over. Um, I I'm bought. Buy out here and uh, <laughs> we get a nursing home. No, never mind. That was me. I'm sorry. Thanks <laughs> oh, a he, lot. He's son. not fit to upholster anymore, uh, sir. I gotta, I gotta take over. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Patrick. I bought a Bernhard sofa. W O. Any education regarding the stuffing? Without any education regarding stuffing, I don't know what that meant. As you mentioned, the feathers came out. I. I still love the sofa and happy I can restuff it. So I think what he's talking about is um, 
we had a down cushion that I showed you on down cushions. Um, a lot of people stuff a down cushion, like on the back cushions, the down starts to, even after you hit it, um, or even if it's a non-down cushion, you don't get the, the body, you know. I recommend going to get these down cushions, like throw pillows, and stuffing it with that, because what, what the soft filling does is it, we talk a lot about transition lines on the online classes when you're talking about upholstery. I never, I don't think, talk about it on the YouTube channel because it's just different, right? Transition lines. So when you when you use, we're talking about here with these cushions. You guys should check it out. Stuffing a cushion cheaply and effectively. So what it does is it it transitions better to any other filling that's in the back cushion. Period. That's it right there. So instead of taking the day crime won't do it. It'll 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 be a ridge and a bump even, and you can't really get it to look right. But the down works. You guys would see if you have this problem. Check it out. And so last on the upholstery show was it last time we were here three weeks ago, Patrick? Uh, which question are you on now? I'm on uh, Mishak. I, I have Jimmy Forrest there. That's nope, good. I'm on Mishak. Oh. Jimmy's next. Oh, okay. Watching your videos just started my business three oh, weeks. Wow, a lot of a lot of them this week. Though. Oh, he's asking how to get clients. Oh man, I'll tell you. I, I'll be honest. Um, I had a business partner once, I, I think she's terrific, she went out with the sandwich board, an old fashioned sandwich board in the town in, here where we are, and she advertised that way in the beginning, and I, I don't think you should be afraid of doing any type of a, of a stunt like that as long as you're not going to hurt anybody <laughs> or put anybody in danger. Um, but how to get clients, I'll tell you the best way, we talked about this Patrick, is the if he's good enough to open his business, he's good enough to teach an upholstery class. I think he should teach. I, I wouldn't even be saying to him not to teach on YouTube, Patrick. I'm not afraid of that, are you? No, we'll definitely check out this. We just did a video, how to run your own shop, so. Check it out. Check that out for sure. For sure, that's the best thing I could tell him, is that to check that video out that we did, right? Was Maybe it called? at some point we could do how to teach your own class. <laughs> well, I think we should. I think we should show people I think you could probably put something together, Patrick. We'll do that. Yeah. So then we got a comment, cushions for the holidays. This is a, um, a man who makes a comment here who's been, uh, <laughs> who's been missing uh, today. And, and uh, he's wanted in three states for uh, stuffing cushions. And uh, his name is Jimmy. <laughs> And Jimmy's an enthusiastic young man, and he just says, love it. Is he watching, by the way, Patrick? Well, I don't know in the comments if he is. Maybe he's pouting. Jimmy, come on, man. <laughs> I didn't have the space, and I, I called the wrong person, the wrong Jimmy. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, David now on reupholstering versus buying new. And he says, um, reupholstery is a ridiculously better value. Here in San Diego, getting something reupholstered is about half the price as it is in Boston. A chair like the one you showed would cost about four to five hundred dollars plus the cost of the fabric. I use my furniture pretty hard, so I'm more into the mid-price stuff. Flexdale is my favorite, as it is undervalued used. Pieces always come back from the upholstery shop looking and functioning better than when it left the factory. Woohoo! Did you write that, Patrick? I wish. <laughs> I do like San Diego. David McCain. Now, that's very interesting to know pricing in a, another community. And San Diego is very much like Boston, Pat. Yeah. So I'm surprised at the Water pricing though. over there. Then, you know what tells me? Probably, I think the reason would be they have more upholsters. The more upholsters you have, the less money, right? It's going to be. Maybe. <laughs> there are other, many other factors. And that show that we did, a How to Run Your Own Upholstery, or the Price Show, Patrick. Right. Pricing Upholstery. Was that this, another video? Yeah, that's a completely different video. You guys should check that out, too, because I, I talk a little bit about pricing. And as you grow in your business, and I'll, I guess this is directed to um, Meshach. Meshach, as you progress in your business and start to get a little bit more seasoned, 
you'll find that you can charge more. Um, believe it or not, gray hair sometimes helps in, in uh, selling yourself. I mean, people trust that you have all this experience behind you and they don't want anybody else doing the upholstery but you. So, you know, be patient in this industry. You, 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 you need patience, I think, to, to get to your full value. Um, in the beginning, when you're young, even if you're the best upholsterer in the world, you can't come in. I don't think you can come in the prices that you can if you've been around a lot. And you know, there's a lot of trust that's built into this business, like other businesses. You have to earn trust. Sometimes that takes 10 years, five to 10 years in a community. But check out those other videos that we talk about um, that talk about how to run a, uh, an upholstery shop. So we have a lot of them, Patrick. Yeah. Um, Happy Thanksgiving, Kevin. That's from Ohio, and Ohio to you, and Happy Thanksgiving to you. And that was the name of that video was a cricket question mark, an unusual piece of furniture. And then <laughs> we have another comment on that same video it says from Rose Garden. I wonder if that's their real name. That would be pretty cool. It could be. <laughs> Give us a laugh like previous videos. You're funny. That's the one I was telling you about. So, so was I not funny in that in that one? The picture of Shirley was funny. <laughs> Which picture? Oh, you the got fun a man. <laughs> you got a cricket in there. Wow. You know, people did good eating. You know, <laughs> they had a lot of protein. Not the ottoman. The not the wood. <laughs> Never mind. Um, and this is from the fox on. DIY upholstering a sofa part five upholstery stage two. Actually, that was a that was one of our rare series of of uh, YouTube videos, Patrick. Yeah, that, that was one of those long ones. That gets a lot of use, though, doesn't it? It does. Those take you guys. The way we do it with the camera and angles and everything, I think we we have the most. Do you think that we have one of the better productions, Patrick? I on YouTube, so. there's a lot of. Uh, I don't want to, you know, put down anyone else's. No, job, I wouldn't. Good job. Some people, you know, we, there's no matter who's doing YouTube videos. If you're doing them halfway decent, I think it's a it's a big effort. I mean, you don't, you know, you're not doing it for the money. I don't think. Um, I think most of us who do it like to teach our trade and try to keep this industry alive. I think we've done our good good portion of that, Patrick. Don't you? Yeah, trying to keep up with the times. That's I why think, I'm here. Yeah. So in the old days, you know, you could walk down any main street and, you know, talking about 50 to 100 years ago and even longer, and, you know, you'd have your blacksmith, you'd have your upholsterer, you'd have your saddle maker, you'd have your dressmaker, your cobbler, you know, the list goes on and on, trades. So if you're in a major city, you have all those, and, you know, you're a young man and you're out of work, you can walk into almost any one of those shops and say, hey, you know, do you need anybody? Or... Uh, if you're a bad boy, the local judge puts you with one of these guys, and in, in order to keep you out of prison, and you 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 learn a trade that way. Uh, today, that those opportunities are very few and far between. But the YouTube videos, that that has filled in a gap that's been there for a long time. Let me tell you. So, um, if you have a young man at home that is looking for a trade and you want to keep him busy and if he's a troubled young man I, I think the YouTube video I think you set him up buy him some tools <laughs> get him set up in a basement and, and, and give him your own furniture first and give him your friends furniture see if you can build up this trade for him because young men need uh, young men sometimes get bored and they need things to do and I think this is a great trade uh, for that so if you guys want any advice on that if there's anybody out there watching who wants advice on how to do that I'd be happy to Give them that advice um, on how to set up a shop. Although we have, we do have that, right, Patrick? Yeah. How to set your own shop up. So yeah. Well, we got it. We got inquiry the other day of somebody who was trying to get into upholstery, and they're asking about supplies. That's right. Yeah. So then we have DIY. Oh, I didn't get to that question. This is from the Fox. I love the way you teach things. I often find teach teachings to leave me, teachers, to leave me more confused. Like that dishwasher guy, right? Exactly what you were saying. Yours, I find very clear and detailed. Thanks for making them. And well, I really, this is a good compliment, Pat, from what I was talking about earlier. Yep. Um, I, I thank you very much. I love those comments. You know, I like, I take criticism too, you guys. I remember somebody, I was sewing on this machine, 
and um, there was some dirt. I, I still think you not dirt, but <laughs> dust, you know. And somebody said, "That's a filthy shop you got there, right?" <laughs> so I said, "I said, you know, in all seriousness, I've been told I have the cleanest upholstery shop anywhere. I mean, it's a working shop. So when you see me sitting here, you might see, you know, some things on the floor, but." Compared to some other shops, oh my God, you wouldn't believe it. You know, how dirty they can be. You know, we have a, I'm going to mention this, Patrick, but I won't mention any names. <laughs> right? I'm going to mention this because it's really funny, you guys. Um, there's a, a new furniture store around here that they have spoofed upholsters in their commercials. And it's so nasty. So uh, let, me, let me just tell you how they do it. So... Um, they got the guy who owns the store. He's at the he's in the shop, a little shop, so very similar to this shop. And he has got the door open and he's peeking in. And in there is that there's an upholstery smoking a cigar. And the ashes are out to here and they're falling all over this furniture. And <laughs> well, sorry. Hold on a second. I thought I had this on hold. Hold on a second. And uh, the ashes are falling on the furniture, and on the table, there's this big gears machinery. It looks it looks like something out of uh, water work, you know, the uh, a crazy saw. like saw or something. It's got all these gears, and they're dripping oil on on their cutting table, and they you know they're slowly moving along, like and making that awful noise. And and the guys, he's just he doesn't even dare come into the shop, right? It's filthy, and he says, "You can take your furniture." your old furniture to a guy like this. And then the door slams and he says, oh, you can come to my beautiful store and buy new furniture. <laughs> right, Patrick? Yeah, exactly. Now, I have embellished a little bit. I know. Right, Pat? I've embellished, right? That's uh, pretty close. It's <laughs> Let's pretend that's what it is. But it's all in, um, I think it's funny that somebody with all that money is so interested in somebody like me. How much could I be impacting his business, right, Patrick? I know. Or, or a lot, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought I'd bring that up. Is there any more live questions? Uh, let me check. Okay. Mm. And then Janine. Hey, Janine. Comments. What? Deborah says hello from Kuskia. I'm not sure if that's right. I, fi I finally get to catch your sh show. Great. And Siri comments again. Love your videos. And Kevin is awesome. Who says that? That's Siri again. Oh, how much are we paying these people, Pat? Twenty dollars for every good comment. I, I talked to them before the show. <laughs> we had a little agreement. Uh, say a few nice things. <laughs> you know, I don't know if this. Uh, I'm starting to wonder if you don't do that because <laughs> uh, there's a very sad story about Tom Jones that I won't go into. But you know, he wasn't as popular with the ladies as he thought he was. His manager was a lot to do with that, but that's a, another story. Patrick doesn't even know who Tom Jones know who is. is. Everything I mention now, who's he? What are you talking about? <laughs> Everything. And I'm, I'm so old now that I'm, I'm talking about like I might as well be talking about T Rexes or something <laughs> like that. But anyhow, making a rollover. Arm cap. Janine says more great tips and techniques. Thank you, Kevin, and thank you. Janine's been one of our first and best supporters, right, Patrick? Yeah. We love Janine. Thank you, Janine. And then we got making rollover arm caps. Another comment. I have probably asked this before. How do you sharpen your scissors? We have two. Do we have two? We do a video. Yeah. Two videos. Yeah. One is with the machine, like <laughs> that machine could have been featured in that new furniture. Yeah, commercial. some rust dripping <laughs> off of it. Yeah. One is a big machine. Don't look at that one. But if you just want to laugh, look at that one. The other one is really good. I have the smaller machine. That's much easier to work. You should check it out. Anyhow. Yeah. Do not use a file to sharpen your scissors. Every upholsterer that said he could sharpen his own scissors and takes out a file and sharpens is only kidding himself. Never works. You in inevitably you have the wrong angle. Scissors are angled. They have an angle cut on them. That's impossible to keep freehand with with the angle. It's really hard, if if not impossible. And the other thing is you tend to point them out. And even a knife, a professional knife sharpener who uses a lot of those tools, always points your scissors out. And once you point out a pair of scissors, a pointed pair of scissors doesn't do you any good. It needs to have a little bit of a round edge to it. That's that's what makes it hard. Even you know, there's specifically professional upholstered upholstery scissor sharpeners that aren't around anymore. So I, I have to use 
I have to shop my own scissors with the machine that I have that's featured in that video. How to shop in scissors. Redesigning a saddle seat from springs to foam. You believe how many different pieces of furniture there are, you guys? It's incredible, right? Almost as many different personalities and furniture as we have in people, right? Um, this one is from Mike. He says, is there a follow-up video that completed the chair? I would like to see how you finished. Unfortunately, Mike, uh, a lot of the videos admittedly are showing segments because that's what we have time for. Um, or that's how long the chair is in. Sometimes, you know, because I'm a working shop, things have to be delivered. So Patrick says, Patrick will begin filming. It's not his fault. Patrick will begin filming a segment on a chair, and then he comes in like the next day or two and says, what happened to that chair? That's already gone, you know? So that's one of the problems. Um, but the on, I, I hate, I know that this sounds like I'm promoting, um, but I'm sincere when I say the online classes are not going to do that to you. Yeah, that addresses those kind of problems. Well, they're not going to leave people hanging. It's from A to Z, right? And it works because you know, students, they want to, they're getting something out of it too. They're finishing a project. So. But I have to tell you, it can be very painful. The process, um, and uh, the process of going through A to Z. Oh, with, people like Jimmy, they like it. Well, I know, with the student can be long. And, I mean, we earn our money on these classes, and I think they're a really good value, Patrick. I really do. Don't you? Yeah, it, it helps. You know, Jimmy's always asking questions. How much is the yearly subscriptions now for that? Uh, one, 175 I think it's the best deal on YouTube. I really do. I know because I live it. I've, I've lived these classes and we've taught them and they're it's long. the only deal. I don't know if anyone else is doing it more than Yeah, really. <laughs> okay. So, and I have to say, we're not doing as much kidding around in those classes. They're serious classes for the most part, aren't they? Although you and Jimmy can't help yourselves sometimes. I know, but I mean, <laughs> they could they could speed through those or put the or put a mute button. Uh, people on. like that. You just got the comment there, you know. By the way, we hear a lot from people saying the mute button is really effective for my videos. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said mute and and they they, they 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 turn the screen down. Is there any way to turn it all the way down? What's the point of watching at that point? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so we got one from. VO 1964, a cricket, an unusual piece of furniture. Hello, love your channel. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. I found you about two weeks ago, and I love, 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 I added a love in there, your craft. I want to upholster a headboard with tufting. Ooh, you have not demonstrated this technique yet. Um, I should say that we have that on the online classes. Uh, Michelle's chair, what's that called, Patrick? Which one? The East Lake or the Tuft chair? The one that she did the tuft, diamond tufted chair. The, di the diamond chair. She needs to get that if she's going to do this because it's it's perfect. It's perfect. It's what she needs, and she can only get the one class if she wants. She doesn't have to get a yearly. So how much is the one class, Patrick? Fifty bucks. Fifty bucks, and she gets to learn how to do. And you get to keep it forever. It doesn't expire. Let me tell you the process that I went through how to learn how to diamond tuft. It wasn't easy for me. I'll tell you. I I that was a long process. So you got the class, you can watch it as much as you want and really get good at it. Um, so I have taught that technique on the online classes. She's right about the YouTube though. I don't think we show that on YouTube. Or I cannot find it on your channel. I don't think she's going to find it, Patrick, on the channel. Maybe not, yeah. We need a good headboard upholstery tutorial. And you are the only one to show us the correct way to do this. The ones that are done by non-professionals do not have the quality I'm looking for. Can you help us all out? Thank I remember you. when you did one of those. I remember you doing one. I know. We didn't get a video, though. But I will say that headboards were popular in the 80s and 90s. They're not so popular now. So I don't get many of them. I can't even remember the last one. I do. I remember delivering it with you. Really? I don't, mm -hmm. rem I don't even remember it. But they were popular. More po That's probably why I don't. Anyhow. Who knows? The next one that comes in here, Patrick, you remind me. Say, hey, remember that person wanted VO 1964? That was five days ago. Wanted to wanted to see one. You know, the funny thing about headboards, though, that I will mention, is um, that most of the times when you're upholstering a headboard, you're putting it flat on the table. This is not me. <laughs> this is one thing that I'll say to you. But really, what you need to do is upholster it with it up. 
because that's how you're going to be looking at it. That's how the client's going to be looking at it. They're going to be looking at it standing up. And just like they do furniture, the mistake that people make is they upholster it flat and then they go to put it up and they don't like the way it looks because it wasn't upholstered as you're looking at it. And we have a good le question here live. Okay, we got a lot. Here you guys. Thank you for uh, sending all these good questions. Um, who is your all-time favorite mid-century furniture designer and why? What's your favorite piece you've ever worked on? That's going to be a tough one. Well, I got the uh, Hans Wagner. And Patrick, if you could quickly look up Papa Bear Chair, can you Google Papa Bear Chair to see who that man? I can't remember the, the 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 design of that chair. Can you just quickly do that for sure. me? Sure. Because this is a great question. This is Cardiel. Who? Cardiel. That's the. Are you sure that that's? I'm the, not sure. This type of chair. It's just Hans J. Wagner has that too. That's Hans Wagner, the chair, the Papa Bear chair. Yeah. That is my most favorite and most torturous, crazy piece of furniture I've ever done. That chair is is done. It's very similar to a Turkish chair that we saw Patrick in a place recently. I can't mention the place, but it, it's a Turkish chair. It's the same thing, same type of oh, concept. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the Papa Bear chair, it's done in brown leather, and it's it's the frame. It's the only wood portion of the frame is at the base. Everything else is built. It's it's metal. Hey, it's, she knows what you're talking about. She, she loves the Wagner and Papa Bear chair. Bent, Bent metal. I've only, I've, one, one. I think one, maybe two, but one. I remember, in all the forty over forty years that I've been upholstering that I upholstered, and this chair was a nightmare. So all of the material and leather has to be hand stitched onto this frame. Now the unique part about this chair, and then by the way, the outside has to be hand stitched. Hand stitching leather is a nightmare. But anyhow. The chair is designed, it's all pullover, really tight. The chair is designed so the metal, when you sit on it, it has the feeling of collapsing. Don't be claustrophobic on this chair. It has the feeling of collapsing or giving you a bear hug. So, it does, I mean, it doesn't come down like this and, and go like this. It just has the feeling that when you sit on it, it comes in on you like this. And, and that's, the, that's the quality. So the story about this chair that I did, these chairs are extremely expensive. I'd say ten to twenty thousand dollars, if not more, Patrick. Wow. They're very did they know what they had? Did you tell them? Did they know they had Oh, piece? let me tell you the story. That this woman who had the chair, she was a, a woman in her twenties and she used to go buy this shop over in I think it was Denmark. One of the Scandinavian countries. Mm. And would walk by and this chair was in the window oh. this beautiful chair this is years many 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 years ago this she was an older woman when I did the job and she would go buy it and finally she would go in and start talking to the guy said I really love that chair but there's no way I mean the chair was outrageously expensive she loved the chair so much she would stop she, she started putting down money towards it she would go and went in every week after a week's worth of work and put money towards the chair finally she was able to afford the chair and she bought it and then she brought it over here and it was an honor for me to do the chair with that story but that's that's an amazing story isn't it patrick that's really cool too bad we didn't have a video camera back then who knows what when that was oh that would have been a hundred hour video to show that now they have a mama bear chair too i think right patrick well, believe me if we ever get a piece like that we're we'll making a video you'll force me <laughs> um so the next so the next one our oh, memories Raina, uh, upgrading store-bought furniture. She said, "Love that fabric." Hi, I Raina. Hope uh, the popcorn is good to business is doing. Yeah, good. is Raina watching right now? No. <laughs> if she is, if she, she watches this. We missed the popcorn. That was good stuff. That was <laughs> missed the missed the class. You know that that poor place over there. Raina. This was a student. If people don't know, she took our in-person class. Yeah, over a place. You know, we, we we one of the rare times when we've gone off-site. And, and taught a class. Yeah, it was going so well, and then boom. We pandemic. had a beautiful studio. It was a big studio with mirrors and lighting and, and natural natural lighting. Yep. It was really we did beautiful. That in January, February. And it was very successful. People came. Raina they traveled. from all over. She traveled a long way to <laughs> get there. And she gave me a nice compliment, Raina. I really, I'll never forget this. Raina said to me, she said, Patrick, that. Um, she had been upholstering for 30 years. She said she learned more 
in that one class that she did in 30 years. I'm going to see if I can show people the picture of her. She did a really cool chair, remember? Oh, that was beautiful, <laughs> yeah. I like it. Very cool. Very like creative. Rena is a very, she's an artist. To, there's nothing, she's nothing less than a, an artist, right, Patrick? That was really cool. Yeah. Um, when we filmed that class, maybe someday I'll see the light of the day. So, Raina commented on making a rollover on catch. She said, Kevin, you were so fast. <laughs> well, Patrick just did fast forward on that, right, Patrick? Probably. So, Ronald Monroe, happy Thanksgiving from Kevin and the team with the picture of me holding a turkey and that arm cap. <laughs> That's funny, Patrick. How did you do that? How did you get that turkey on that arm cap? You made it too easy. <laughs> <laughs> it says, good day, Kevin. When pricing a job, does it include material or just labor? Or you're, you're separating it out. You're given a cost for labor and in the beginning, a cost for how many yards of fabric it's going to need. And then people will say, well, how much is it per yard? Well, we don't know the f cost, but then you have to give an approximate to try to give people an idea. So labor, labor is pretty solid. Fabric can fluctuate. So fabric can fluctuate from, in this part of the country, retail 30 to 190 or $200 a yard or more. Um, and that's tricky. You have to you know, work with the client and their, and their budget a lot of times I find if you're going over 60, 70, 80 dollars a yard on a sofa for instance, that, that starts to get into an area where they don't want to spend. So um, it's tricky pricing. Well, we have that video, Pat. Yep. The pricing video, we talk about that. I think we've covered a lot of aspects of upholstery, don't you, Pat? Yeah, there's always more to do though. So now we got a, one more page. You believe this, Patrick? Wow. I told you there's a lot. Does that happen? We miss a week. And we're going over, aren't we? Our, our hour, but that's okay. That's fine. We got a good uh, questions here. I'm having fun, especially from Janine. Janine's got two questions in a row here, which I love. Janine, keep them coming, will you please? Because we love this. Oh, this was only nine hours ago, too. Yep. The Diamond Chair. Oh, she's watching, you guys. She's watching the online class, The Diamond Chair, with Michelle. And, uh, you know... <laughs> We're all different. Jimmy and Michelle, the two people that are featured on the online classes, did. And we have Bernice too, yep. who teaches. But she's by herself. She's yeah. not with an apprentice. But the different styles talk about different learning styles and different approaches and different personalities. You know? yep. um, but it works for both of them. Yeah. And I'm hoping you know, after this is over, Michelle can come back and do another one. Oh, yeah, we yeah. miss Michelle. Michelle's, is she watching? Does she have the. I'm not sure. I'm telling you. We, I have a feeling like she'll be back when this is over. We do miss, we do miss, I miss all the aspects of Paul Swing, uh, the, the, the teaching. But anyhow, she says, turned out beautiful. So she's watched the whole thing, Patrick, lesson 10. Yeah, and yeah, so that class just ended. Every lesson is up now. So there you go, guys. If you know, if you don't know, you can get the classes anytime and yeah. watch them all, right, Pat? We just, when they first come out, we just release them week to week, so there's a little anticipation, but yeah, you can watch them all at once, you can watch one, what do you And then one day ago, Janine says, the Diamond Chair week nine, she says, very excited to watch the last episode's exclamation point. Seinfeld has a story about exclamation points too, don't they, Patrick? Remember? Yeah, Remember? Seinfeld, uh, Elaine wrote, yeah. she, <laughs> she wrote a book and she kept using exclamation points all over the book. And yeah, that, that's one of my habits. I do that too. And they uh, and the editor, yeah, the editor said, was it the editor or the, the boss? A boss said, "Why the, excla the exclamation <laughs> points? <laughs> Why?" And then he re read an example of what she was doing. Yeah, was I was walking down the street <laughs> <laughs> to take a bus. <laughs> I'm not making fun of Janine. Some people actually do do that, for real, though. I'm one of them. But, I, Janine, I just want to say, you are using the exclamation point correctly. In a, in correctly. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> she's laughing, I hope. Is she watching? Uh, probably not, because she's in a different time zone. Yeah. Well, she must love watching and seeing her name mentioned on, on TV or YouTube. <laughs> she's lucky. It's probably warm over there right now. I know. <laughs> jo Jolene said... Filling a foam cushion cheaply, she said, saved my life. I don't know how I saved a life by doing that, but <laughs> I'm glad I could save a life. <laughs> Maybe we gave her upholstery CPR, right, Patrick? Maybe, I don't know. What do you think that is? 
I just included in the other funny She should let us know how we did that. Uh, how did I save a life? Did she have a client? Yeah, that that's just a weird comment, or she actually, or maybe I'm thinking you saved her life with a job and you helped her out. That okay. She's stuck or something. I don't know. Well, I like that comment. Terry is commenting on stuffing. Another one. Gee, we should do more of those, Patrick. Yeah. I knew I was saving those old feather bed pillows for a reason. I have a 30 plus year old A. Rudin sofa that is still in great shape except for the sad sagging cushions. I didn't want to spend a lot or anything at all actually. <laughs> He's being brutally on or she is being brutally honest, right? And your solution is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, I love that and saving furniture and, and recycling aspect of what we do. So. I appreciate that comment. I wonder how much we've saved people, Patrick, with these videos over the years. Probably a lot, considering how much new furniture costs. And the last comment is about how to tie a slip knot. That actually saved my life. That did save my life, Patrick. Well, the sure. slip knot saved my life. And I'm going to tell you how. This is this a survival story? Yep. I, I, had, I was up in Canada. I used to do canoeing in the wilderness. And I was canoeing across a, a, a lake and a huge storm came up and it rained and it was cold. It was like an uh, unusually cold summer, summer evening. And I, by the time I got to the camp, I was drenched in cold water. I was drenched and I was shivering. I was cold. And there was a designated camp area and there was no firewood to be seen. It had it one of these areas we call picked. It had been picked clean of all of the, all of the firewood except that in these pine trees, way, way up on the pine tree, probably, you know, I don't know, 50, 60 feet up, there were dead branches. And I, I had the rope. I had a rope enough. To, I slung it along, and the other end came down, and I was able to tie a slip knot and pull. You really needed to make sure that you were pulling it. And the slip knot helped me. went right up to the branch, and I pulled and I pulled all these branches. I had plenty of firewood. Saved my life. Oh. Said, true story. Um, Al, Alan says, thanks for this. Just repaired my girlfriend's couch. The cats had torn a button. <laughs> oh, there we go again. <laughs> that the cats, the cats had torn a button out of. Wow. These cats. That's a special cat, Patrick, that did that, right? <laughs> sure. So I could just imagine this cat. He went up to the sofa. And he says, you know, today I'm not going to just scratch the side of the sofa. I'm going to go up on the cushion, up to the button, and put my paw in and just twist that button until I pop it out. Wow, I wish I had a YouTube video of that, Patrick. <laughs> but anyway, Patrick's got this. You printed something out for me? Yeah, I just want to get this. This is Belinda. She sent you that before. I don't want to get lost in next week's uh, oh, questions. Oh, Belinda. She's, uh, do you have a picture up there, Patrick? It's up now. She says, my sister-in-law's had no room to keep her father's favorite chair when he passed away, so this was my first project. Did follow lots of videos and re-ran them several times, but was worth it. Thanks so much, Kevin. Wow. She did a fabulous job on that, Patrick. What do you very, think, very Pat? Good. Very good. Thank you, Belinda, for, for sharing that. One minute ago. Are we current or what? <laughs> right, Patrick? Why I just don't want to get lost in the pile of questions that we get. So unless we have any other more, we really, I think this is one of our longest shows, Patrick. Well, that's we, what I said. That happens when we think a week out. We really ran over, but we really appreciate all these comments. Keep them coming, you guys. Keep supporting us. Keep the good stuff. And, you know, believe me, I, I'm not one to, to the rest of my laurels. If, if I'm... If I'm, my teaching isn't uh, up to snuff, or if you see something that I can, especially you professional teachers out there, if you see something that I can improve on that's within my abilities, that I for sure would take the criticism. Um, but I really, thanks for tuning in. There's no other live questions, Patrick? No, nope. thanks everyone. So we'll see you next time. Thanks.